me. Well, I hope you didn't think that was one of them. <laughs> oh, there they are. Yeah. For me to get back. The sun on one side, and you see a uh, thumb stump on the other side. So that's that's my turn. And if you want to know a little bit about these uh, uh, geological marvel of this place is that it's about it happened just a little bit of time ago. It's about 20 million years ago. I don't know. <clears throat> you probably saw on TV Discovery Channel, and then we're talking about the line of fire <clears throat> and the fact that under the oceans there are cracks or, or fire line where the uh, lava come out and kind of push the platform one against the, each other. Well, what's happened? And then they're really pretty straight, north to south, both on the Atlantic and the Pacific. Well, what's happened about 20, 30, well, between 20 and 30 million years ago, exactly, I was not there, so I don't know, but <clears throat> at the end of uh, the, one, the, the line of the Pacific, there was a shift uh, eastward. And uh, this, in other words, the crack go underneath the platform, the continental platform, by the area by, that's now probably Mexico, south of Mexico. All this area was a little bit south of what we are today. And, and it under, got underneath and continued to spew uh, lava. And it, I don't know if you ever saw the guys making uh, uh, the pizza dough, and then they go underneath and they move it this way. And if you look at carefully when they do this movement, they create crest on both sides. You move it east to west, and you have this crest north south <laughs> that's exactly what's happened here this mountain this range of the mcdowell is the result of this movement underneath so this has been created that way you have uh, the uh, mcdowell which is, a, is an arch north south in fact is northeast southwest kind of you will see on the other those mountain over there as the white tanks, there are 50 miles on that direction. There is 50 miles on the other direction of the disasters, and that's four parallel lines. <coughs> so, and those are called ridges. And in between, there are called what they call beds, because, the, and, and in other words, these are not valleys. What they call valleys in Colorado is because a river carved that valley. And, and brought all the debris and filled it up. In this case, that didn't happen. That happened because underneath there was a force that stretched the land above and created these ridges. And all this area, by the way, was uh, at one time part of a big ranch, a brown ranch, and it's extend for, I don't know, many freaking acres. I, it, it's huge. North of Dynamite, I don't know if you know what it is, but I mean, from there up to the um, gosh, south here, and uh, they they uh, went there and they put their, a mark of property <laughs> on that spring. So if you go, that that's what it is. So is that private property uh -huh. there? Yeah, really. But not not anymore. But it was oh. part of the Brown Ranch. Yeah, property. Oh, okay. It's been uh, so that's in the fifties and late fifties. Yeah, when the, the, the old the, the old guy died. And then the kids uh, they fight to each other, and then everything went went south. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was not uh, economical any any longer. To be honest with you, so a combination of things. It's actually pleasant here. Yeah, my back is almost dried off. <laughs> they were using it as spears for hunting. That you saw that's a uh, human on a on a on a preserve. Uh, uh, that kind of hike. That's where we were hunting with these guys. And by the way, they were using similar technique as the Aboriginal of Australia were using, with the small ribs and the long one, and the small to push the long one. 
to increase uh, the, the speed and the distance, that's it, we're using similar technique. They uh -huh. found this stuff in a preserve. Yeah. This little skinny layer of veneer. Well, this is done by uh, <coughs> microorganisms that come with, with the wind and uh, a little bit of water, a little bit of dust. They live there and that create this uh, fungi kind of thing. It's called as a veneer. We talk about our work in the in the preserve here. It really comes down to three things. It's the uh, what we call EPA, which is education, which is educating the public pretty much of you know what's here and why we're trying to do what we do. And uh, the P is preserve the environment. Um, Franco, I think it's hopefully by Thanksgiving we'll have an additional how many acres? Another six thousand acres. So we'll go 6, to twenty-seven. 000. So that'll thousand. get us to 27,000 acres. At, a little uh, bit over that, but yeah. And the city of Scottsdale has made a commitment through its uh, sale, through its uh, supplement to its sales tax to continue to buy and support this land. And it's really to protect it. You know, protect it from not only development, protect it for the animals. I mean, there's, we're talking on the way just here that we're out a little late now, but if you came out here early, there is still wildlife in the preserve. Uh -huh. It's wildlife in your backyard sometimes <laughs> here too. <laughs> On the third thing, the A is the awareness, just being aware that uh, how important this land is to us historically and how important it is to preserve it going forward. And, uh, 